All right, everybody, again, thank you very much for joining us here. Sports Gamer continued coverage of our ECL Elite Division semifinals here in the postseason. Of course, Tuki uh, joined by Sin for today's broadcast. And Sin, after coverage of our first series, we shift now to our second series. Again, our defending champions in HREDs taking on Granite Gaming. Now, as we throw back to the playoff bracket and what we have seen so far, of course, it was Granite, the seventh seed, knocking off the number two seed in Sabo Esports in six games in round one, setting the stage for this matchup. But as we'll see with the latest results, it has been a very rough start for them in terms of how this series got underway yesterday, as you see the score lines there. Yeah, bit of a one-sided affair thus far. Six goals, four combined for h Reds, zero for Granite Gaming. And, you know, we were you know wondering at times in that series against Sawo if you know, Granite Gaming is at, at times seeming to come out flat and being unwilling to sort of adjust to what's in front of them. And, you know, we kind of mentioned when you play a team like a Ferlunda, like an H-Reds, that simply is not going to fly. And so far, it's been all H-Reds. And we'll see if Granite is going to be able to sort of, you know, uh, you know, improvise on the spot here and try to find, you know, ways to score on this h red squad. It's easier said than done, of course, mm -hmm. as you would expect again with the team like H Reds that much like Forlunda entered this season without any changes. Why mess with what got you to the finals? And in H Reds case, what won you your first championship as a unit? We get a look now at the team stats before kind of looking at the lineups here. And I mean, Sin, so far, I mean, it's not often granted. Uh, the last two games for Granites. Did not help that goals against average, to say the least, but H-Reds certainly looking as strong as you'd expect them to look. Yep, absolutely. A, a power play that's one for, th you know, one for three, essentially. Uh, 17 goals for just seven against, you know, a 10 goal differential in, in the amount of games they've played so far, which is, I think is just six. It's kind of ridiculous uh, coming out from H-Reds. Now, the one thing I will say is, you know, their penalty kill, um, not as strong as it was, you know, say in that regular season. But I mean, probably haven't taken uh, a whole lot of penalties, which is a bit of a rarity. They usually can kind of take quite a few penalties and they've gotten into trouble uh, doing that in the playoffs past. Absolutely. So with that, let's get you guys a look at the lineup here for this particular matchup. Again, for Granite Gaming, Ekin, Zobi, and Antonio Manon up, uh, up top, up front, whatever you prefer. Furion and Lamanen's on defense, Roisto. Between the pipes and on the flip side there for H Reds, Villapoika, Beto, and Nikki Dangles, Domi and King of Apes. And of course, it is phase in goal for the defending champions. We start off with that center matchup, Zovi and Benito. And Sin, you know, it's tough to take these matchups at face value sometimes, but the bottom line is it doesn't paint the prettiest picture. No, it doesn't. Ever since, you know, the opening series, really, this entire offense is getting shut down. And Zovi had a pretty good opening series. You know, he was getting some kind of, a, I think, both of his goals. One was a game tying. One was a game winner. I mean, those are clutch goals. But now you're going up against the upper echelon. This is Benito, who is one of the best centers in the ECL, who hasn't been great in the faceoff dot. But when it comes to eight reds, it hasn't mattered a whole heck of a lot yet. Absolutely, of course, the winger battled here as well. Notable is, again, it is Ekin, who has had a great postseason so far alongside Antonio Manon, Villapoika, and Nikki Dangles on the other side. Sin, I mean, it's it's worth noting, at least, Antonio Manon, the lone forward under a point per game. Yes, he has that phenomenal two-way play, of course, that we have seen with him being a former defender in this division but at the end of the day, you want to try to keep to at least that point per game pace, even when it is in the playoffs and we might see less goals. Yeah, he had, you know, he had some good, he had some big goals in that previous series as well. And he, he did get off to a bit of a slower start. But in the case here of eight reds, every single goal is going to be that much more important. Every single player out there, especially on the front end, has to be a kind of an offensive threat. And, you know, you can see he's, you know, putting the putting the pucks on net and you know, doing what he needs to do. But yeah, you do need to get that production at some point, you know, against Atres, you just have to find a way to put the puck in the net. Now, as you would have seen, if you caught the coverage of the first series here, our fellow broadcast partner, Mr. B Major, was able to get a word with a few of the players. And for Granite Gaming, he was able to get word from defenseman Furion. Very intrigued to see what he had to say about the matchup so far and what Granite will be looking to do today. So let's throw it over to that interview now. 
All right, we are here with the left defenseman for Granite Gaming Furion. And firstly, thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. We really appreciate it. You guys made a splash with your performances, not just in the regular season, but last week as well, pulling off what maybe some would consider an upset versus the two seed in Sawo Esports. What do you feel has contributed to your team's success in getting to this point? Uh, well, first of all, thanks uh, for having me on. Um... What has contributed to our team's success? Um, I feel like our um, our team defense. It, I mean, it, you know, it starts with the with the team defense and our uh, our ability to shut teams down and and uh, strategic strategically uh, knowing what to do in in uh, most situations. Uh, so I think that's the main part. And then, uh, of course, we we've been getting some some timely scoring from our forwards as well. Like uh, I feel in general this season we've played better against the the stronger teams. Uh, I know it maybe didn't look that that way yesterday, but uh, in general that's been a strength of ours this season. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And uh, as a team that's really been on the rise the last few seasons, especially, how does it feel mm -hmm. you guys being at this stage of the season and taking on the defending champions in Hrez with a trip to the finals hanging in the balance, nevertheless? You know, the, these games are the the most fun games to to play during the season. Like this is where you, this is obviously where you want to be. Well, not specifically down to nothing in a series, but uh, the, playing in the semifinals and and. Uh, even the the playoffs in general in the ECL Elite Division is just it, it's a whole nother level really, and uh, this is where you want to be. So so you kind of just got to take the time to enjoy it, uh, even if the games are tight and like the every play essentially matters. Uh, what, what's key is is enjoying it, and we we've been trying to do that these past few weeks here uh, at the end of the regular season as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you did mention, unfortunately, you guys do find yourselves down two to nothing against Hreds in the series. But despite losing those first two games, what positives are you guys looking to take in and build upon here in these next two games tonight? Well, you know, based uh, based upon the uh, <laughs> the comments uh, the 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 Reds players have directed towards us in the past few days, uh, I guess you could say an advantage of ours could be that they they. Uh, might be underestimating us, feeling that the uh, series is already over uh, at this point because uh, it, it, they clearly don't really respect us as a team or as players, which is you know obviously fine. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but uh, that could perhaps be something that that could work in our advantage. But if we're being honest, uh, if we play at the level we did yesterday, then that might very well be the end of the series. So. I would say that we definitely have to step up. Um, essentially, moving forward here, we're going to have to play our best game of the season in every game moving forward. So, like, game three is going to be, have to be our best game of the season. And regardless of how that turns out, then game four is going to have to be our best game of the season after that. So that's really all there is to it uh, from here on out. I love that you said that. I was actually uh, perfectly kind of segueing into our last question here. To pull off this comeback, obviously you are down two to nothing against a good team, but you guys have been able to play at that high quality all season long. Mm -hmm. What's something that you believe is going to be key to come back in the series? Well, obviously they're a really great uh, team. Uh, not to throw shade at them or anything with that last comment. They're an extremely talented team and they are the reigning European uh, champions for a reason. But for us, I feel like the the only thing we can do at this point is just try to enjoy it. Like you know, the the don't go out there and and feel like we have to you know do this or do that. We we what well, well, the only thing we have to do is enjoy the moment and and have fun together because that's that's really what we've been doing in our best moments this season. So uh, if we can do that, then I feel like uh, everything will just fall into place after that, and we'll see how far that takes us. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, um, firstly, thank you again for taking the time to talk with us. Uh, before we wrap this up, is there anything that you'd like to say to your fans, any of the viewers, or even your opponents in Hreds? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, well, let's let's have a let's have a good series the rest of the way, and and to everyone tuning in, I I hope you enjoy the games. Absolutely, man. Well, I can say personally, if I've enjoyed it so far, thank you once again for taking the time to join us. Best of luck to you guys the rest of the series. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, Sin, Sin Furion putting uh, our English to shame. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Very interesting uh, from him, though, just in terms of how he views the matchup, how he views the opposition viewing. Mm -hmm. Granted, at the side of you know, at the stage of things, uh, very interesting. Uh, you know, whether or not you have anything to uh, to kind of pick out of that, let me know. But we get a look at this defensive battle, and again, Furion and Lamanen's. Uh, you know, this was probably the biggest story of the season, uh, along with Antonio Manon leaving FBK, reforming, kind of uh, evolving Vesa Pompa into this Granite Gaming side of things. They are at least the duo for Granite, the the face of this season for a reason. But on the flip side, in that far side, Domi and King of Apes have been the best defensive pair for about a year now. Uh, just yeah. how some way this pairing just managed to take that next step forward and have been playing the best hockey we've seen them to uh, individually play and, of course, as a unit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially in terms of King of Apes, where we've seen him take a step back, producing some of those points, but in turn, his defensive game has just skyrocketed. It kind of reminds me of a season or two ago when Nicky Dangles made it, you know, he said, I'm going to make an effort to improve my two-way game. He did that. His, uh, his points took a step back, but his two-way game was incredible. Now the points are coming back as well. I don't think this Hreds team is anywhere close to done getting better. And that is a scary, scary thought when it comes to the rest of the ECL. Now, of course, we heard from Furion. B Major gets to round out the interviews that he was able to conduct before the action. This time, we're going to hear from King of Apes of Hreds. Let's send it over to that now. I am here with none other than the right defenseman for Hreds, King of Apes. Uh, firstly, thank you for taking the time to join us and answer a few questions. Uh, you guys find yourselves up two to nothing in the series with Granite Gaming going into tonight's games, and you're on your way to potentially punching a ticket to the third straight ECL finals that you guys have seen over the past few seasons. How are you guys feeling with the way things have gone so far in the series? I think the whole postseason has uh, uh, go very smoothly, as we haven't lost any games yet. But uh, yeah, I think we have to step our, our game up a little bit more and... Uh, to be honest, I don't think we were yesterday at our sharpest, and uh, that's kind of <laughs> bothers me. But uh, yeah, we need to improve our game and uh, yeah, continue with the winning uh, style. <laughs> Yeah, well, you might not felt it was your best two games in the world, but despite facing a tough side in Granite Gaming, you guys looked rather dominant yesterday defensively. You kept a really good offensive attack in Granite pretty much at bay and posted two shutouts to start out that series. What do you guys felt led to that success through those first two games defensively for you? I think it's our defensive routine. Like, uh, we defended very good, and uh, I have to give a shout out to our goalie face he took some uh, very big saves and uh, it's like it's very nice to play with him like when when i fail he can cover it up and uh, take those big saves and uh, yeah it's just at the moment it's just fun to play with uh, how we are playing yeah, absolutely. And it's a lot of fun to watch and a fun to call for us as well. Uh, something that we kind of noticed led to a lot of that defensive success was how well you guys did at stopping Granite Gaming on the breakout, not allowing them to really set up in the offensive zone. How important was that going into the series for you guys strategy-wise? I think we didn't uh, do any big strategy changes. Like, we are playing just our uh, routine at the moment. And... Uh... I think it's just the uh, routine is at the moment so high that uh, we can win those games and defense very good. But uh, yeah, we need to still a bit improve that to the, uh, maybe the finals. Let's see. Speaking of the finals, like we mentioned, just two wins away from punching your ticket to the ECL Elite Finals. Obviously, you guys trying to be the first team in ECL history to go back to back and win a championship. What do you guys feel you need to do tonight to bring this on home? I think uh, we need to play a little bit better. Uh, I think we took, uh, personally, I, I take a few stupid uh, penalties and uh, it kind of cost us some uh, attacking time and uh, it didn't uh, run so smoothly uh, the game. But uh, I think we just uh, need to stay out of the box and uh, to try passing a little bit uh, faster and uh, just shoot the puck to the net and uh, I think that's our strategy tonight. Yeah. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, firstly, uh, thank you again for your time. And uh, before we wrap this up, is there anything that you'd like to take the chance to say, whether it be to your fans, some of the viewers, or even to your opponents in Granite Gaming? 
Well, come uh, uh, see us tonight. Uh, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be very good games. We are highly motivated, and uh, let's see if we get something a little bit fancy. <laughs> we'll see. Well, hey, man, you guys are always a lot of fun to watch. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this, and best of luck to you guys tonight. Yeah, thank you for our invitation. All right, Sin. So you heard it there, the word routine being used. And in a sense, I think you could kind of read that as being a bit dismissive, but at the same time, it just goes to show what a what a well-oiled machine this H-Reds lineup happens to be. Yeah, I mean, their routine is 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 some of the best hockey that we've ever seen in the ECL. And it was proven in last year's championship when they were able to sweep for Lunda by playing insane defense the entire time. Like every after every game, we're like, okay, well, they can't keep doing that. Well, they absolutely did. And that's kind of what separates them from the rest of the pack. And you're seeing a phase on screen right there. You know, obviously a clear beneficiary of that defense and a great cold tender himself at to boot. Look at those numbers on near 85 save percentage, two shutouts so far, one, one, seven goals against average. And for granted, even though it's been a rougher last couple of games, Roy Stowe has been phenomenal kind of, you know, what a what a surprise that he was coming in midway through the season for granted and carrying them this far uh, to to the semifinals. Absolutely. I mean, arguably I, I, one of the biggest stories, it's so tough to say, you know, what the story of the season has been when so much changed, but absolutely. Roisto is emergence as, you know, someone who kind of went from being that depth goaltender to now he is a obviously legitimate starter at this stage and is giving Granite the opportunity in the series. Keep in mind, those numbers are still as strong as they are, despite Sin, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, them being outscored 6 to nothing in the first yeah. two games of this series, and his numbers are still that good. Shows how strong he's been, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, as strong as he will have to continue to be, as, again, the offense tries to find their form to put some pressure on FaZe, who we we continue to talk about. I mean, my God, already in such a short amount of time for FaZe, he's won the league, goalie of the year, rookie of the year. Like, he's basically yeah. done everything there is to do already. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't he with this team? Uh, Ves they were, when they were Vesa Pompa, yeah. didn't? I, I'm pretty sure FaZe started it. Yeah, so yep. kind of uh, interesting to see how that's kind of come... Uh, yeah, full circle, so to speak, with him, you know, give a chance to eliminate his uh, former alma mater here in the elite division in the semifinals. But yeah, it, it's going to be going to be a great series here. Obviously, a great set of games and Atra has a chance to close it out. I really liked another thing that King of Apes kind of said, like, even though they've scored, you know, they've outscored the opposition 6-0, they're always looking for things to improve upon. And, and again, it's kind of one of those separators between the good teams and the great teams for me. But that's in. The teams have matched. We are just about ready to go. Again, game three and four of this series will be played here in this very broadcast. It is up to Granite Gaming to ensure, as it looks like we're going to have the uh, lobby get put back together. But, Sin, it's up to Granite Gaming to ensure that they play tomorrow. They are not guaranteed to play on tomorrow's cast. They have to earn that with at least one win here so so difficult though yeah. again h reds you know <laughs> it's nikki with dodge season in the chat love it h reds have been so <laughs> so good over the past year now and again not only do you win the championship in dominant fashion sweeping for lunda you then win the number one seed and now you're six and oh just two wins away from going back to the championship and they're not buying into their own hype all that much. I mean, some people might disagree <laughs> based off of some of the comments that we've heard recently. But at the same time, it hasn't been detrimental, uh, perhaps, that if they are buying into their own hype, it hasn't been detrimental. Uh, you know, some people might view them as the uh, almost as a bully in a sense that can keep getting away with the trash talking because yeah. they're pretty good at defending themselves. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, even if they come out there and say some outlandish things with some chirps or trash talk, they go out in the ice and they absolutely back it up. And like, you can't help but say it's like, oh, OK, well, yeah, I guess you're right at the same time, because, yeah, like you said, they back it up They're I think they're they're doing a good job of being confident and, you know, you know, on like, you know. But on that fine line, at the same time, not getting out of hand. And I mean, why wouldn't you be? You swept for Lunda in the finals. You're here perfect so far in this postseason. And you're playing some of the best hockey carrying over from last season that we've really ever seen. So 
it, it's going to be tough to kind of uh, knock them off of that mountain that they that they've uh, put themselves on here. And for Granite Gaming, especially, they're down really backed up up, up against the wall already. We'll uh, we'll really see what happens because this team, Hred, is filled with high skilled players, great team, great chemistry. They play as one, big personalities as well. And they seem loose. I mean, Nikki Dangles is chilling in chat, cracking jokes. You see him on the camera, right? You know, on the cams right there, probably, uh, you know, joking through their comms as well. It's going to take a lot to knock this team off of their game. And Granite Gaming is going to do their utmost to try. The prediction still live in the chat. Very much in favor of the H Red side of things. Make sure to get involved with that for who you think will win. Game number three. Again, we'll also cover game four. The question is, what will that series be? What will this series be at that time? Where will the uh, dominoes fall? As it is a 2 to nothing series lead for H-Reds, we are about to see if they can make it three. Again, our defending champions just about ready to go. Sin, you see it. Some of the leans in full effect. Uh, there was a great lean earlier on the cams where all I could see was Tamu's hairline. Uh, you know, they're, they're important games. They're sweaty games. As granted in the road whites, let's see what they can do against the defending champs. Early struggle here at the blue line. Antonio Mannon able to come up with a bit of space on the backhand for Ekin. He is wearing his team's golden helmet. Again, signifying the team leading score. So keep an eye out for him. It is Nicky Dangles for Atreds. You see him on the far side of your screen there. Again, very, very important. Still looking for the opening goal of this series. Our Granite shut out in those first two games yesterday. It is very on here. Trying to find a little bit of space, and uh, it can be difficult to find even the smallest bit of space when you're going up against Atreds. Lamanen's pass off the mark was handled by King of Apes. Now Nikki Dangles hands off for Villapoika. Regular season scoring King and has continued where he left off here in the postseason. It's Domi now taking his time back for Nikki Dangles to the slot. Benito, King of Apes shot broken up by Furion and handled now by Zovi. Bit of space for Antonio Manon trying to deal with the poke checks of King of Apes who shuts him down. The Atreds going right back down the other way here. Benito now Villapoika goes over to the half wall. Loose puck. Handled by Furion, has four members of Atreds to deal with. He does draw the trip, and it is going to be Domi. And Sin, that's still kind of the one aspect we've seen from Domi. He can get into trouble with the trips. We saw him you know, fix that and absolutely shut down for London the championship last year. But at times, he's gotten in trouble with those poke checks. Yeah, and that's this kind of entire team of Atreds. That's their one still detriment, if you could still call it that. It's, it's that they can take some penalties, and they take them in bunches too. And... You know, we heard it in the interview as well. You can't keep giving teams chances. It is the power play here for Granite Gaming. Antonio Manon has it. Tried to go down low for Laminens. And he circles back, back for Antonio in front. Intercepted by Nikki Dangles. Now it's Villapoika who will send it all the way down. Sin regular season, fifth-ranked power play for Granite, but the top PK in the league for Atrex. They looked really good on that first possession. Some nice passing that was just turned aside. I think, I think it was Nikki Dangles who intercepted it. Other than that, it was a beautiful, beautiful passing play coming out from Granite, trying to get, you know, a nice shot on net. They weren't able to do it, and they lost the zone here. And with time ticking away, it's going to be tough to sort of reestablish that attack. You gain the line now, 25 to go, but it's knocked loose immediately. Still fighting for the puck. Zobi for Fury on the big step up there from Nikki Dangles. And once again... The puck is cleared. That will do it. What felt like an incredibly brief man advantage for Granite Gaming. Another great step up poke check by Nicky Dangles. He's been on point so far. It's King of Apes. Good cycle to get it all the way around. Loose puck recovered for Villapoika. D to D. Here's Domi back for Villapoika. In front, loose puck. And Roy Stowe is able to cover. Looked like almost a secondary shot from Nicky Dangles after that first one uh, sort of didn't go through. Kind of one of those... Uh, Buffered shots that he just sort of scooped to the net. Nonetheless, the save had to be made, and Royston did just that. Off the draw. Loose puck now in the corner. Recovered again by Villapoika. Knocked off. Covered here for Granite, but for how long is the question? And again, they turn it over. Rebound. Back to the point. They score. What a heads-up look from Benito. The captain dishes it back to the point. It's one to nothing for Atreds. I mean, that is... 
honestly absolutely disgusting. Um, a, most people would take the shot in that case, even even on the backhand right there. You see the net open. You usually take the shot in that in that scenario. Benito, the 200 IQ play, kicking it back up top to the point to then be shot into uh, half of an open net. Just great job from Atreides to get that early advantage and grant it already on the back foot. Huge, huge moment there for Atreides. Domi, the goal, makes up for the previous penalty taken. And a one to nothing lead now for our defending champions. And Granite still looking for their opening goal in this series. Crazy to say already here in the first period that the next goal is oh so important. A two to nothing series or a two to nothing lead might just be a bit too much to overcome if you're Granite and you've been struggling to score this much. Couple of opportunities here though. Faye is able to keep them both out of the net. Nikki dangles for Villa Poika. The shot, the rebound, they score. Easy does it for H Reds. Then they double up the lead. It's now two to nothing as Benito gets involved. Yeah, that's just a you know pretty fundamental play coming out from Atreus. They could do a bit of it all, some fancy stuff, some fundamental stuff. Low shot looking for the rebound, but and Benito getting rewarded for driving the net hard as a you know you should in that sort of situation. Taps that one home, and already Atreus have doubled up their lead, and Brandon need to stop the bleeding quickly. Again, they could be facing a three to nothing deficit, and I don't know how many people, if any, how many teams in the world, if any, could win uh, three straight games against H Reds, let alone four. Not a whole lot, and I would say right now, the way this season has gone, the way in the way last season has gone, the only team who really stood a chance against H Reds is H Reds so far. Again, if they you know, that they put themselves on top of this mountain. They're almost, you know, becoming, uh, you know, at least kind of a, a legendary team just with the way they play defensively, offensively, just seemingly unstoppable here. So someone's going to have to come out and, you know, be able to knock them off that pedestal that they've put themselves on. And, I mean, just look at the blue line presence completely shut down. Nicky Dangles over for Antonio Mann, and he couldn't get the shot away. We approach the final minute of play. Here in this first period of game number three. Granite trailing two to nothing. Certainly not the start to this game that they would have been looking for. Let's see what they can do here. One more rush. Loose puck bouncing around. Recovered there by King of Apes. Benito for Nikki Dangles. Now it's Villapoika. Loose puck. Apes for Benito. Had the puck knocked loose at the last moment. That will do it for the first 20 minutes of play. We'll get another look at the opening goal from Domi, the first of two for Atreus. Again, just a really, really nice play by Benito to feed that one back to Domi, who had a good read, crept his way into that higher slot area as, you know, kind of a, uh, a, a secondary uh, sort of pass. You know, they have the passes down low, obviously, and you, you see that all oftentimes from defensemen to creep into those high kind of quality one-time areas. Now, granted, gaining surprisingly, having the advantage in the time on attack, but, you know, once they have that in the zone, as we saw kind of as part of their game, they want to get towards that middle, and they'll take some time to do it often, but they can get in the habit of forcing it, and you're not going to be able to do that against Atreids. They're going to keep you to the perimeter and probably a force a lot of turnovers as well, and with only two registered shots to Atreids four, definitely seems to be the issue right now. They're not able to get to the middle of the ice. If they're able to do that, they'll stand a better chance of putting that one home, and it might come to where they're going to have to you know, force Atreids to come out of that zone. Point shots, you know, more perimeter work, you know, some odd angle shots from further out. Just try to get them moving down low in the zone. Second period underway here. Let's see indeed what Granite Gaming can do. It's now seven periods in this series without a goal for the team that was able to upset the two seed in the regular season against him we've talked about it just the levels like you see a team like azure gordon that finished 16th and got automatically relegated but you consider just how good they are compared to teams in, in pro or in lights and then just the drastic difference between azure gordon and a team that misses the playoffs or that team that misses the playoffs versus a team that made the playoffs and then even now you make the playoffs but you have to take on a team like h reds yeah. the skill gap just within a 16 team division 
is absolutely incredible as H-Reds continue to prove just how good they are. They have the puck back here. Let's see what Domi can do. Runs into a little bit of traffic. That puck chop ineffective, and it'll be King of Apes over for Villapoyca. Finds its way all the way to Benito, who rushes into the play. Let's see what the captain can do. He was involved in both goals so far for his club. Domi now. Reaches in, gives it to Nicky Dangles. Patience and zone time, the name of the game for Atreds. Benito gets it back from Villapoyca. Nicky Dangles scores! Crosby esque backhand in front. Three to nothing now. For H Reds, it goes from bad to worse for Granite Gaming. And that's just kind of a uh, a clinic of uh, of a cycle coming out from H Reds right there. Kind of the puck and player movement near perfect. Granite doing their utmost to defend against it and not doing a bad job whatsoever. And then all of a sudden they're able to get that puck into the middle on the backhand. Doesn't matter. Nikki Dangles finds a way to get that goal. Three nothing for H Reds. That pass back to the point was broken up. Let's see here again if they're going to make this a game. Got to get that goal back sooner rather than later. We have seen H-Reds at times, you know, kind of take their foot off the gas, but sit in a playoff situation. I don't think they're going to do that, but maybe just maybe there will be a few opportunities to take advantage of. What a puck shot. Goes all the way back to King of Apes at the point. Nearly turned it over. It does get it back for Nicky Dangles. See what he can do fresh off of his first goal of the game. And somebody else that, that we called out as, a, said, I believe, a former Rookie of the Year winner. Uh, I mean, he's been in competition for best forward. He's always up there in goal scoring. He's arguably the best two-way forward in the league. He's just continued to get better and better as these seasons have gone on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy watching his uh, development over such a short amount of time. But right back in, there's just, there's no there's no stopping H-Reds right now. It's, they're looking for for everything. I mean, the dump and chase is working. The zone entries are working. And not only that, like, as soon as Granite get possession of the puck, they're surrounded by seemingly two H-Reds jerseys every single time. The relentless pressure that comes out from this squad is, is really something that every team should aspire to get a couple shots. Royce doing a little bit of trouble there. Thought I might have another goal call. We're ready to go. Granite Gaming, eight and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Again, looking for their first goal of this series. Antonio Manon now back to the point. What a block from Villapoyca. Went all the way into the bench. Yeah, someone someone lost some teeth on that bench. That is for sure. That thing rocketed there. Uh, some uh, some impressive shin pads coming out, though. We might have to check if those are legal. That was some springy action. Incredible stuff there. I did see it. I managed to get to a hockey game this past weekend. Saw a great glove save uh, by the uh, by an uh, you know by an assistant on the bench. And it's one of those things I look forward uh, to seeing touted in a future EA release. More bench uh, interactivity. Meanwhile, you uh, have some of the issues. <laughs> They're still there. As that pass in front is intercepted by Furion. And again, you can see the struggles here for space. They do find a bit of an opening here with Zobi. Back in front, short side. Just ran out of room, did Ekin. Yeah, just not quite enough real estate left there. That was a nice play, and that's who you want in a good scoring location is Ekin. He's... He's this team's catalyst. I've said it multiple times. He can get these guys going, and what an opportunity that was right there. Spirion wins that one back. Couldn't keep it into the attacking zone. Pressure for Ekin. Puck now dumped in for H-Reds. The chase for Filipoika couldn't win the foot race. Good pass again over to Ekin. Throws one on. Goes a little bit wide. Thought there might be the rebound. You, you like to see what they're trying here, though, Sin. Like, the attempt to just throw a puck on and see what happens, it's just, it's almost heartbreaking for me to see that go wide mid-sentence. Yeah. Well, by my voice, it's like, oh, man, could something go right for Granite right now? There's Lehman and down in the corner, pinching in, finds Antonio, banks it off the back of the goal, maybe tried to catch the goalie. As we approach the final minute of play, race for the puck, it will be an icing call with 105 to go here in the second period. It's a good opportunity here for Granite, but yeah, I mean, you said it definitely. It's not a whole lot going right, but they haven't had too many opportunities, so when something does go wrong, it really looks like it's going wrong. So that's kind of what you are faced with when taking on a team like Atrids. That's a good intercept from Antonio. We'll see if they can do anything with it. Good hit check there, though. Completely took Furion out of the play. 
Five seconds. Laminates can't get over the line. Filipojka for Nikki Dangles. Loose puck recovered, and that will do it. Incredible to say, I, at this point, it's had eight full periods of play without Hreds surrendering a goal in this series. Uh, pretty ridiculous, but that's kind of the playoff Hreds that I guess we're just going to start getting used to. They are, you know, really a really great defensive team, and they have tremendous offensive weapons. I mean, what else can you say? It's, uh, I feel like you're almost gonna be, you know, sounding a bit broken uh, record-like, but you can see from the numbers there, of course, it's not just the time and attack that they have, which is equal to Granite Gaming, but it's the amount of shots that they're getting and the amount of uh, those shots that are decent, you know, looks and, you know, making the goaltender make a save, you know, no real throwaway chances on net ever. They always have a follow-up to it. They always have people going for those rebounds, going for those loose pucks as well. And they're simply right now on another level that Granite simply cannot find. And we see they're trying that shot from Ekin, trying to look for a rebound, you know, a similar way to that, that Benito goal earlier on. They're not able to connect. And it's just right now, Granite really, really on the ropes. But you just, you got a feeling like you just need to get one goal. Just, just prove that you could score against this team and maybe the floodgates will open. Third period underway here in game number three. Again, game four coming up upon the conclusion of this specific matchup. Again, ECL Elite Division playoff action here in the semifinals brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm, Kovan Lakritzi, and ST Hockey Granite Gaming. Down by three, technically not out of it, but certainly need to find that offensive form here in these final 20 minutes of regulation. Zovi. Has it down low, knocked off the puck. Lamanen's now back down low for Ekin, tries to get it in front, nowhere to go. Antonio recovers across, and they score, but it is being waved off. That was incredible work down low. I mean, just hungry for the puck. A little bit of, I'm wondering why this is going to be waved off. Maybe a, f a skate, I'm not sure. They're actually just laughing, as you can see, like in disbelief almost. I kind of don't blame them. And it does not count. I'm a little Oof. curious. I, I didn't see goalie contact. I, it's hard to tell it without. Kick. It had to have oh, been a man. kick then is, is my guess. I mean, you could argue that they were a little bit lucky to pick up the puck as they did, but goes from bad to worse. Chance for Ekin handled well. That rebound attempt there. Faze played it perfectly. It's Antonio Manning just all over the ice right now. Ekin nowhere to go. And now here's Villapoika. Trying to bide time for the numbers to get in there, but Lehman is able to shut him down. He also draws the trip. It will be another Granite Gaming power play. And another stick infraction for H-Reds, which uh, they've been known to do time and time. That's just how aggressive they are in the defensive elements of the game. And no matter what zone they're in on the four check, using those uh, defensive uh, tool sets, uh, neutral zone, defensive zone, whatever, they're always kind of active with it. And it creates situations like this, granite power play. Failure to clear. Antonio Manning just out of the reach of Zobi, who has it now. Tries that backhand attempt. Faye is not fooled whatsoever as we have a, uh, a race down the ice. And uh, straight into the goaltender he goes. Missed the finish line a little bit there, Nicky Dangles, but sure he'll forgive himself as Granite still on that aggressive face-off set. Don't win the face-off again, but a good job of not allowing them to clear it out. So even though Granite right now not winning the face-offs, they're doing a good job of just trying to keep that puck in, in the offensive zone, which is exactly what you need against this h red team. Once that puck is cleared, it's almost seeming like the power play is as good as done. Tough for a goalie in this instance. You gotta be on your game. You never know when one of those pucks might be heading your way. One timer there was blocked. Here's the Lamanins now, 110 to go on their second man advantage of the game. Benita can't clear that one all the way out, but he does recover it. Nicky Dangles gets it back to him. Cut in front, just trying to weave his way through. Good job by Granite to shut it down. Now here's Ekin, back for Lehman. And Ekin again, one more time, the pass in front and they score! Finally, Granite Gaming have their breakthrough. It is Zobi on the power play, three to one the lead now. 
Yeah, no uh, ref there waving his arms to wash that one out. Zovi, a massive, massive goal. A great play down the right boards uh, when Lehmannen's got the puck there. You know, both Furian and Lehmannen's love to do that. Get the puck on the boards, skate it down into the zone. They kind of help the collapse there. Kicks it across at the last possible moment to Zovi, who buries it. And the deficit now is just two. Anything can happen, still a long time to go in this one. But again, Granite finally find a way to break through, and it's done on the power play. Let's see what Villapoyka can do. He is the man that took that penalty, got it to Nikki Dangles. Big save by Royston. Remember that one, if this game gets that much more interesting with another Granite goal. Benito around the back of the net for Domi. Stretch pass, Nikki Dangles, right back for Benito. Great movement here from Atreds. Benito has it, gets it in front, nobody home. Zobi hands off for Furion, let's see what he can do. It bounces off the legs, now it's Zobi one more time. King of Apes able to corral that loose puck. Good for checking pressure there by Furion. Granite Gaming able to keep it in. Furion again, let's see what he can do. Down low, trip is called. And for the third time in this game, Granite Gaming will go to the power play as this time it's King of Apes' turn to go take a seat. Yeah, I think they're uh, making the rounds right there for uh, guys to go uh, sit in the box. And this is a huge, huge moment for Granite Gaming. That was a good bit of pressure they had. They're able to force a mistake out of Atreds. Now they have to capitalize on it. Off the draw, it is Benito who's able to win it. Nikki Dangles is able to clear it out. Villa Poika is going to be able to make a play for this one. Good poke check. Get back to the neutral zone and a hip check. Knocks it further back into Granite's own end. And a one for two on the power play in this one so far. Zovi, the goal just a few minutes ago. Furion's pass intercepted and cleared by Villa Poika. And it's the captain of this team looking to lead the charge. Of course, not only a great sixes player, an accomplished 1v1 player as well. Numerous people on both of these teams happen to be. We have just 15 seconds to go on the power play. Errant pass. Domi clears. And Atreds will survive this one. Missed yeah, opportunity, Sim. Absolutely. Not as much going on that power play as the other one. I feel like, you know... They didn't necessarily take the space that was being given to them, you know, some forcing some things that simply weren't there, including that last pass, but they're gonna get one more opportunity as Atreds, another stick infraction, and that will again. be Domi. And yep. this is what Atreds... <laughs> this Why is what Atreds seemingly do. They, they kind of get into penalty trouble and they take those penalties in bunches. And if they're not careful, it could spell trouble, but Granite has to make them pay. Power play chance, that shot saved by FaZe. And I was being somewhat sarcastic, but at the same time, why not pull the goalie? You know, your last power play just fell short. Granted, you know, if you score here, you're only down by a one, but the clock is low. Why not try to perhaps increase your chances of scoring sooner rather than later with that extra attacker out? If you're gonna score, you need it to be quick. As Zobi banks it off the back of the net and the puck is cleared. Now under four minutes to play here in regulation of game number three. Might be also a bit of a spacing issue with the six skaters on your side can be a bit more uh, tricky. There's a chance here now for Ekin. Just Furion didn't get much on that pass. He has to go right back down to him. Pressure, Zovi cuts to the net mouth. Voila Poika is able to take it away. Let's see what Nikki Dangles can do. It's knocked loose by Lehmannens. 20 seconds remaining on this fourth power play. They are one for three here in this game. Zovi wins it back. It's on the side of goal. Now Ekin back to five on five. Banks it off the back of the goal. Bouncing around. Scores! Zovi has his second of the game again. Granite Gaming able to kind of bend that madness into their favor. And just like that, it's a one goal game, Sin. That's absolutely massive. Not going to count, go down as a power play goal, but that's one of those power play influenced goals where they're using the momentum from the man advantage to stay in that zone. And Puck just sort of bounced up front, but everyone did the smart thing. Crash the net, try to get your stick on it, try to send it to the net, and we are going to see the timeout coming from Atreds. they got to stop this in their tracks right now. That's too many penalties that they've taken. I mean, you know, percentage isn't going to look bad one for four, but that is essentially two for four with the way that worked out. I don't think the H, I don't think Domi had really, 
uh, gotten too far back into the zone here as we see on the replay he's you know obviously not as a part of that collapse he was rushing back towards it and that that's what penalty trouble uh, can, can can do for you all of a sudden the three goal lead has evaporated it's a one goal lead there's two minutes left that's time enough for granite to get this tying marker this one is not over. Let's see what happens. Granite have a chance here. Perhaps they do turn this one over. Now here's Villapoika down that right-hand side. He'll go around the back for Nikki Dangles. Double-team pressure. He weaves out of it. Back to the point. King of Apes uses the boards. Finds Nikki Dangles one more time. 48 seconds to go. And right now, Atred's doing a great job of killing the clock while in the attacking zone. Benito. Welcome to the lead. I know again, killed that time. Almost drew a call there. Nikki Dangles. Over for Villa Poica. Benito able to hold it in the corner. Excellent work by H Reds here. Frustrating for Granite Gaming. They finally get possession, and needless to say, they need to make the most of it, but they can't. Lose Pock. Fear out a little bit of trouble. Lehmanens has it. His pass off the mark. 15 seconds to go now. H Reds trying to hold on. They were up three to nothing. One more rush for Granite Gaming. Antonio Manon can't get in the line clean. Puck bouncing around. Benito has it. Gets it to Nicky Dangles. He's all alone. And he misses the move. But it doesn't matter. 3-2 to two the final. Atreds hold on to win and have a 3 to nothing series lead. The defending champs one win away from making it back to the championship round. I just said... Uh... Huge, huge comeback effort there from Granite. Unfortunately, fell a bit close in his H Reds. Get the, uh, the huge goal, and that was Zovi getting the two uh, big goals for his squad. He seems to be kind of the that clutch goal, goal scorer for them. He had eight game winners in the regular season, which was good enough to be tied for fifth. Actually, had the team lead in goals as well, one above Ekin. But it, this, in this one, it was just too little, too late. They got in too deep of a hole too early, and H Reds. You know, they started take, you know, taking those penalties, making certain mistakes here and there. Granite did a good job of punishing them for it. But again, they simply weren't able to do enough in five on five. They got in a too deep of a hole too early. And that's really what spelled their doom in this game. And now, even more so, backs are against the wall down 3-0 in this series. And if H-Reds clean up those penalties, it's hard to see Granite putting up, you know, a, a big enough fight in this next game to stay alive. As we mentioned, Granite would have to win uh, to see action tomorrow. They got one more chance, but Sin, th there is a chance the series could be over. I mean, you know, if we look yeah. at it realistically, I'm sure Granite look at it the same way. That was their window. They just didn't have enough. They are now down three to nothing in this series. As crazy as that is, but that's that's where we're at right now. Granite Gaming need to win three in a row to get back into this series. We'll see uh, what happens as we're going to get another look at some of these goals here. And uh, again, that first goal, what a pass from Benito. Yeah, that, that really kicked things off. And that was kind of just that vintage H-Reds who oftentimes, sometimes we criticize some teams making that extra pass. But in that case, it was uh, incredibly perfect. Then at the one after that, just a simple blue collar goal, shoot the puck on net low, have someone driving the net and... Unfortunately, we're not going to get to see all the replays, but um, it, yeah, just just great work from Atrez, but they got themselves into a little bit of trouble as well, you know, with the penalties there. And that's, they've, they kind of have a slight of a bit of history there as we are able to get back into those replays. That play from, from Nikki Dangles was, I, it was from the entire team down low, but Nikki Dangles kind of backskating in and then still backhanding it on net, like seemingly not even attempting to get uh, to that, uh, to that forehand was, well, uh, pretty dirty as well, but the comeback from Granite, it was there. Uh, just just kind of fell short. They, they had the window, but you said it. They just simply weren't able to get enough of that offense. And I think that really stems from you're not going to probably get too many scenarios where you're going to have four power plays in a game. They scored on one tech, you know, one and a half, we'll say, because that second one was definitely power play influenced. You have to do more four on, uh, five, five on five, excuse me, against this team. You have to find a way because... That's where you're going to win games, and that's what H Reds understands, and that's why you see their five on five play being as phenomenal as it is. You see it on screen now, a three to nothing series lead for H Reds. We already know that we'll see at least one game between Feriestad and Fralunda on tomorrow's broadcast. Again, that is 19:45 CET, about 1:45 PM Eastern for those of you on the North American side of things. 
The question is whether or not we'll see Granite and H-Reds in action. If H-Reds win this fourth and final game, they complete the sweep and an undefeated run back to the championship round where they look to retain their title for Granite Gaming. Well, you need a win if you want to see any more games tomorrow. This is the last game that they are promised this season. Game four coming up in just a few moments. We'll set the stage for you after this brief word from our sponsors. So don't go anywhere and stick with us. Lähdetään haastamaan yhdellä yhtä vastaan. Loistavan älkäisen pelaajan ratkaisu. Oi, mennään. Lukulla ollaan valmiina. Ja sitten katsotaan. Kaikki kestää. Vanhan aikaisella. Kiekko lapaa. Ilma baby. Klassikko. Maali. Wilhelm vei todella komeasti nakkikioskille. Wernerin nakki on loistava vahvistus Wilhelm joukkueelle. Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Well, you know, Sin, sometimes we just got to show off those beautiful graphics that we have Mm -hmm. as part of our presentation package. But again, everybody, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Again, we have one more game to go. Game number four. Sin, it's one of those situations where we don't want to uh, just say the obvious all the time. We don't want to overstate certain things, but obviously for Granite, those two goals in Game 3 were the first two goals uh, of the series Mm -hmm. for them. You know, it took them a long time to find their breakthrough, and for them, their breakthrough comes from just getting the puck into kind of the, the blender in a, in a sense, you know, yeah. you just, you don't know what's going to happen when the puck ends up in the slot and is bouncing around. But that level of havoc looks to be the opening for them that they kind of need. Yeah. But that being said, it's also came at, you know, the two times when they had an advantage uh, in mm-hmm. that scenario with the man advantage uh, again in that second one, Domi still trying to skate back. So when 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 H reds are five on five, it's so so hard for them to get into those kind of higher percentage scoring areas down low or or in the slot. It's a lot of times simply not there. But that that is really what Granite's game is, and you know, kind of as we talked about with Havu in in, in seasons past, it, it 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 can go to their detriment a bit. Is that they always want to play to that system? That's where they always kind of want to find the offense. It's very rare to see them step out of that box. And H-Reds is a team that can punish you for that and can play a lot of different ways, as we saw. They had, you know, some fancy attempts, some breakaway looks. Uh, you know, Blue Collar just shot for a rebound and and scored off of that. They are a team that could kind of do it all, and they can shut you down while they do it here. It's really hard to see Granite uh, being able to come back in the series. They need to win four straight, and H-Reds is playing at a level to... To where that's almost, you know, they're setting perhaps a historical bar. If they win this, you know, if they're going to, if they get to the championship and then win it again, they will have made ECL history by being the first back-to-back champions. And it'd be hard to kind of argue uh, with how good that they're playing to say that that isn't a likely thing to have happen this this season. Here we go. It is Granite Gaming in their home, black and yellow. Let's see what they can do. Here's Antonio Manning for an early opportunity that's knocked away. They must win this game to continue their season. Again, a semifinal finish for them. Still not all that bad, all things considered, as again, it is their first season. Uh, technically, their first season as a unit. Of course, the members of this team have a lot of experience in, in playing together at this stage but while it would be a good finish for them you know realistic or not any team that makes the playoffs in theory has a chance you never know what's going to happen in these games the semi-final finish you could be happy with it good save by Roy Stowe but you could still be a bit disappointed you know they're going to want more let's see if they can get another good kick save there by Roy Stowe Furion having a little bit of trouble trying to get out of a high danger area as H-Reds, again, just putting that pressure on. It is relentless from Villapoika. Puck down low again for Furion. Nowhere to go. It, it, just always in a double-team situation, it feels like. He's finally able to clear that puck out after winning it back. Now here's Zekin for Lehman and Zekin again in front. Antonio tonight scores on the rebound. Ekin gets the opening goal for the first time in this series. Granite Gaming strike first. Yeah, and 
you know, much to what they said, uh, what that, that Furion said in that interview, they're just going to go out there and have fun. You can see him having fun on the camps. Definitely helps to get that opening goal. And that's a great play right there. Zekin on the follow-up opportunity kind of knocks that one home. That was a tremendous two-man zone entry uh, between him. I think it was Antonio there, if I'm not mistaken. And they're able to capitalize on it, get the first goal. That's so, so important here. Now Atred's got to play but from behind. See what Villapoyka can do. Hands off for Nikki Dangles. Tried to go back to the point. That puck went right through Domi. All the way back into the H-Reds defensive zone. King of Apes. Risky pass there. Doesn't pay for it. Does give Granite a chance to maybe put the pressure on. Benito able to carry it out. Granite win it right back. So again, the opening goal of this game from Granite. It was Ekin. Golden Helmet is the team's leading scorer. That shot on, stopped by FaZe. Great job there positionally to not give up the rebound. Yeah, great job. And uh, the one huge, huge detriment that would be to Atreds right now is to give up another quick one. And that would really kind of start fueling uh, Granite's attack. And they, you know, really start to uh, get some of that belief that they can not only win this game, but maybe start inching, clawing their way back into the series. If you're Atreds right here, you want to try to snuff it out immediately. We're going to see that aggression in that four check come to play now. Nikki Dangles tried to feed that one in front. Again, good job by Granite. Decent start already halfway through this first period. Atred trying to gain the zone. Good patience. Huge hit there. King of Apes down with an injury. See if that opens up some possibilities for Granite on the counterattack. Zobi has it now. Can't get it to Antonio. Gets it right back. Again, unfortunately, turns it over. Nikki Dangles, series of drop passes. Domi using the wall. Is Villapoyka down low? They tried to self sauce, perhaps. Benito, Nikki Dangles just wide. Another one thrown on. A lucky break there for Granite Gaming. Royce, though, went swimming the other way. Again, the pressure from Lehman has to wait for an outlet, but in the time it takes him to find an outlet, turnover here. Benito's pass off the mark. And the time it takes you to find an outlet, you have two members of H Reds right in your face. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations as you see a shot on there from the corner get swallowed up by Roisto. It's that they're fortune checking at the same time, blocking the passing lanes. It, it's something that H Reds do. Uh, probably, I would say, if, if, maybe the best in the ECL. For Lunda does it pretty well as well, but this H-Reds, I mean, Nikki Dangles and Villapoika especially are so good at that. When they're forechecking, they're also being, you know, very uh, cognizant of where those passing lanes and outlet passes will be and make sure that they're attacking from those angles. For the base-off win there for Zomi. Saw the center preview in terms of the face-offs, and they have been pretty... Uh... Pretty close at times, but also, I mean, hey, not bad for Granite Gaming at times as well. It's just been a matter of translating those extra face-off wins to that bit of extra offense. That pass off the mark. Again, Nikki Dangles has it. Villapoyka shot blocked. Rebound off the side of the goal. Secondary opportunity for Benito after that first chance did find its way on. Loose puck. Furion can't get it through the traffic. 140 to go. Here's Villapoyka. Drops it at the line. Domi picks it up. See where he goes with this. Back to the point with Nicky Dangles. He'll get the switch. Again in the corner. Good movement, but being held to the outside. One-timer deflects wide. 30 seconds to go now in the period. One back again by H. Red. Shot by Nicky Dangles. Kick save Royston. And again, a secondary opportunity is denied. Nicky Dangles just getting back to his feet. Trying to, trying to join the fray, but two seconds to go. And that scramble for the puck will kill off the clock. Eck in the opening goal. Sin, let's get another look at it. Just a really nice play, a bit of a, I mean, after the zone entry, I wish we could see the zone entry because it really was a thing of beauty, just a kind of a, a pass over to Antonio who, ate, who had about a half a step, put the shot on net and it was Ekin just kind of cleaning it up right there. And again, that, that, that opening goal for Granite is just so, so massive. And it's, it's essentially exactly what the doctor ordered right there. And for A-Treads, they're the ones pushing back. But you can see they did a good job of that. Two more minutes of time on attack. More registered shots as well. So they're doing what they need to do. Roysto so far done a good job. But yeah, that's that's the zone entry right there. It was Lehman who kind of uh, was able to gain the line with his stick. And then just, I think he just did a little soft area sauce over it and, or got bumped off the puck and it bounced the right way. Either way, it was a very, very good break in kind of taking what H Reds like to do at the line, which they, they have they have the kind of the five men lining up at the line and then two or three collapse on the likely puck carrier and the zone entry man at that time. 
it just kind of, uh, you know, they use that to their advantage. We're able to get that through and create it on a kind of a mini two on one, which led to that rebound goal. Second period underway again. Granite Gaming need a win here to continue their season. Otherwise, eight reds get to rest up tomorrow. Again, tomorrow's cast will find out who makes it to the finals in the other matchup as Royce makes a good kick save there. Dangerous chance. Both teams at times have tried those one tees, but again, both mm -hmm. sides very good at blocking those shots. Yeah, that one did make it through, and King of uh, King of Apes was going uh, for that glove hand side. Did have a bit of space there, but the aim just wasn't true enough. The puck again in the corner, a, a battle for it. It's Atreds coming up with it now. Benito, the shot blocked down. Villapoika in a race with Lamanins for that one. Another chance there for Benito. Off the quick pass from Nikki Dangles in front. Another great save by Roisto. And again, trouble here. Self-inflicted wounds perhaps for Grand Gaming trying to survive after another pretty brutal turnover is that shot from Domi. Deflects off of the defender in front. Now it's Benito, the captain in the corner. Tried to go around the back. Granite, a good job there on defense. Boyka for Nikki Dangles. Now it's Benito along the half wall. Battled on Antonio Mann and able to dig it out of trouble. Now finds Zekin. Here's Zobi. The shot rebound just out of the reach of Antonio Mann, and he was a bit too far ahead of it. Yeah, very good play, though, right there from Granite. Just really a kind of a simple play, kind of going back to the well, looking for another rebound opportunity. Just didn't connect. And the puck around the back here. In front, they score that quickly. It can happen. H Reds tie this one up. It's Villapoika who gets the goal. It's a brilliant job, Villapoika, seemingly coming out of nowhere right there. As you, uh, he just simply wasn't picked up. You saw the number 89 kind of streaking in there at the end, perfectly where the pass was going to go. And that's H Reds with the quick response. And Granite's been having a lot of trouble on their breakout, so you really start to worry there. You know, how are they going to be able to get back in the attacking zone? Because Atreds, their pressure is really starting to mount. We're seeing Granite kind of run into those situations. Where are we? All right, apologies for that. I think we are good to go. The quality should tick back up here in a minute, and there we go. So... And it always has to be something where it's like, hey, here's a really eloquent point. LOL, you don't get to make it. <laughs> the life of a play-by or a, a color guy uh, in, in a commentary scenario here. But we are already halfway through this second period. There's a pass in front broken up. Again, now tied at one goal apiece. We'll see what Granite's able to do. Again, their first lead of this series has now disappeared. And had it not been for Roisto, you could argue it would have disappeared even faster. He's been great in this game. Can't stop everything, though. Domi, back to King of Apes, gets it back. Great movement. Nikki dangles, and it's in! It's going to be an own goal from the looks of it. h -Reds, two quick goals, and they grab the lead. Yeah, that was intercepted by, I believe that was Furion right there, low in the slot, and with that right-handed stick, as someone was coming in trying to get the shot away, I think just sort of bumped him into the net. And then lost control of the puck in the back of the net. And from bad to worse, a four grand. The one goal lead evaporated. And now they're down by one. Rough situation for Granite Gaming. Still about 25 and a half minutes to go in regulation. But again, as it stands, Granite Gaming will not be in action tomorrow. They need to change that soon as they possibly can and a chance for Antonio Manon just broken up at the last moment by the defense in front that is how quickly H Reds can change the outlook for their opposition you think okay we've given up some chances maybe we'll be all right all of a sudden it's now two to one for the defending champs Zobi and Antonio Manon were there to pressure Ekin as well trying to put the pressure on here but King of Apes able to at least get that puck back to the neutral zone and Furion will be offside. Granite doing a pretty good job here of trying to uh, mirror some of the uh, forechecking pressure of Atreds with some of their own. They're kind of creating some havoc, but Atreds also you know, really trying to have some alternate passing lanes. You see them doing some area sauces uh, directly horizontally for a supporting player to come up with speed and try to take that puck out of the zone. And now an errant pass back into the Granite ends. And they'll be forced to reset. 
And now Granite trailing by one, two minutes to play. The puck in the corner, double team pressure for Granite. They are able to win it back. Here's Ekin. Goes to Furian at the point, tried to hand it off for Laminance. Loose puck handled well. Antonio Manon shot on, wanted that deflection for Zobi. Here we go, two men in, Zobi. Able to get that puck, it's knocked loose. Laminans now. What can he do? Six seconds, Antonio's pass off the mark. Good possession, they couldn't do anything with it. Two to one, the lead for H-Reds, heading into the third period of game four. The last period of a hope for granted. The last period they're promised in this season and they need to overcome a deficit to get back. I mean, it's definitely possible, but you can see H-Reds being much more careful with their sticks in this one, opting for a lot more gaps, a lot more body uh, sort of position plays and, uh, and bumps and things like that to really sort of limit the mistakes that will open up these opportunities for granted. Now, this is a very tight one goal game and oftentimes this is where H-Reds are at their best. Again, we have to keep referencing it last year in the championship. Three of those games that they, they won against for Lunda were decided by one goal. And they were just phenomenal on the defensive end of that. And they're going to have to do that here because Granite is going to be throwing everything that they can at the wall, trying to see what sticks. And it's a, it a decent period, that second period. They had about a minute of attack, a couple more registered shots. They're going to have to do even better here in this third period. They need at least one goal, preferably two, because you don't want to necessarily uh, put your season uh, on the line in an overtime. Indeed, this will be the last period of play that Granite Gaming are guaranteed this season. They have to earn more from here on out. Will this be the final 20 minutes for Granite, or can they uh, fight their way back? At the very least to an overtime, if not an outright win, and guarantee themselves some games tomorrow. Let's see what happens here now. Again, they need that goal. They have just three goals through the first uh, three and two-thirds of the series so far. This one will go down for icing. Close call there. You see Granite now trying to stretch the game out because they're running into a bit of that issue when they're trying for the breakouts. The aggression of H-Reds, you can't really move the puck out too fast, but if you take your time, they'll collapse around you. It's kind of a rock and a hard place. One-timer blocked, an injury picked up by Ekin. Good kick save there by Roisto. Again, H-Reds able to win it back in the attacking zone. Only momentarily, Lehmann's now trying to get something going. Here's Antonio Manning on the off wing. That drop pass, nobody home. Granite will have to reset. There's the heart around. King of Apes all over it. And the quick passing from H-Reds on these breakouts. It is Benito gaining the zone off the back of the net. The loose puck in the corner. That one's going to be won by Domi. He ends up with the, uh, the full faced uh, first dive into the board. <laughs> Certainly not what he was looking for. This puck dumped in. Will go down for icing. I initially thought this was one of those uh, newer trip animations where your guy just kind of falls flat on his face right there. Um, so I was very surprised to not see a, a call on the ice. But yeah, I think you're you're right. Just kind of uh, <laughs> getting the dive there instead of uh, the hip check or whatever else he was trying to do. Let's see what happens here. A good chance on the attacking zone. Eight to five now. The advantage in draws for H-Red. Shot, rebound, they score! Antonio Manon finds the game-tying goal here still somewhat in the early stages of this third period. And that's exactly what we kind of said that they were going to need to do is either be quick off the draws before you can really, uh, the opponent can really get themselves established or, you know, try, try some shots from different areas. They did both on that play right there. Shot from the point, picked up the rebound and all three of their goals. Uh, of their last goals, I've been off of those kind of rebound plays. So that's definitely something that I think they're going to want to keep uh, looking for because the slot opportunities, as we said, are not going to open themselves up too often. They had some good ones in that first game where they were able to force the puck through the slots, uh, through the slot and didn't get them clean, but they were able to get goals nonetheless as Atred's looking for the quick response. Very dangerous moment with Villapoika in front there. It is a, a brand new game at this stage. Puck turned over. Poika for Domi, D to D, save, rebound. Puck was loose, Roisto going all out to make that initial save. Domi throws one on, bouncing around. Lehmann is able to skate that one out of trouble. 
Ekans has shrugged off that injury, worth noting. Fury so unable to pick that one up. Trouble again through the double team. Lehmanns has it now. Big spin, rocket pass off the stick of Zovi. And again, the pressure from Atreds. Proving to be a problem for Granite on these breakouts. Into open space, now up the ice, Ekin. Back to the forehand, that shot blocked. Lehmanns still fighting for it, loose puck. Fury on for Zovi, it finds its way to Ekin. I have to reset seven minutes now. Here in the third. Domi for Villapoika. Over for Nikki Dangles and back again. Furion was able to get a, t uh, you know, a, a, a shot there, at least a stick to the tape to break that one up. Pass in front, Nikki Dangles the shot and Roisto able to make the save. 5.51 to play here in regulation. These are key saves coming out from Roisto. The pushback from Atrez, you always have to try to survive those first few waves that come out because they come out flying and they're not done yet. And offense's own face off. Benito's been pretty good at these key draws. Benito not able to get that pass through. Back to the point. King of Apes can't hold that one into the attacking zone. Don't be able to recover. One mistake might be enough for either side. Just offside is the call here. Loving on the faceoff. That was almost the mistake as they passed it in the traffic on the breakout attempt, and it was uh, turned over briefly, but Furion simply couldn't hold the line on the puck pickup. Is it a Zobi? Able to gain the zone. Loses it, though, as he approached the high slot. Next goal could very well be the winner, although when we've said that in the past, we saw three goals in the final few minutes of a game not all that long ago, so you never quite know. Yeah. Teams like this, a great chance for Zovi. Just couldn't bury it. Tony Manit. Can't hold on to that one either. It's H-Reds in control. Here's Benito. Trying to skate in open space. Great pressure on the back check. Antonio is able to come up with it. See what Laminans can do. Now it's Ekin. Loose puck. King of Apes handled it well. So we approach the final minute of play here. Villapoika. Benito in the corner. D to D. And that one may have clipped the post. Incredibly close there for Domi. He dangles, has it for Atretz. See where he goes with it. Tried to go back to Domi. Great job by Ekin to take it away. And Granite Gaming fend off elimination. At least for another day. Zobi, now Ekin, Antonio Manon gets involved. Little Poika for Nikki Dangles, intercepted shot and a deflection for Antonio Manon, but it went right into his own leg. Down low, Lehman ends, that one around the back, 20 seconds to go. Benito takes the hit, Domi's there to pick it right back up. Antonio Manon sends it down. Here's Zovi. Seven seconds. Ekin shot denied by FaZe. Furion trying to hold. Antonio tried to go back to him, and we will go to wow. overtime here in game number four. I mean, we often expect a very, very big push at the end of the game, uh, but it was from the team that we didn't quite expect right there. It's usually Atred who, uh, in those clutch moments, really gained the advantage. Granite, though. Taking it to them in the dying moments, trying to get that go-ahead goal, getting some good chances as well. FaZe had to be sharp, make a couple of those uh, save opportunities, and it was Atreds kind of in survival mode at the end there, but they will survive and will have an overtime here between these two teams. It's, I, I don't know. Again, overtime, anything can happen, but Granite still alive for now. And that's really, at this point, all you can ask for is we get another look. Just a simple play. Shot from the point, rebound, and a goal. It's similar to the first one they, they kind of got on that rush play. It was a pass across, shot on, and Ekin cleaned up the trash. So, I would think that we might see that a bit here from Granite. I do think we'll also see them go for their, 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 uh, their more familiar opportunities as well in those slot things from behind the net. You know, can't get too predictable, especially against a team like Atreds. This is it for sure now. Next goal wins. Atreds win. They're off to the finals again as Roisto. Nervous moment there. Granite Gaming, if they win, we will see at least two games on tomorrow's broadcast in terms of Elite Division playoff action. Here's Zobi on the individual effort. Kicked away by FaZe. Of course, it is a 3-1 lead for Falunda over Feriestad. 
Indeed, might be some Pro Division coverage tomorrow as well, should that end quickly. Time will tell. Of course, our Pro Division uh, playoffs also in the semi-final stage. Short side bid there, broken up by the traffic in front. As Domi pinches in, battle for the puck. Benito's there. Gets into the open space now for Villapoyca. And Nicky Dangles battling for it. It's Granite who are able to come up with it. Domi's pass back up the middle, right back into the hands of Granite Gaming. Puck dumped in. Let's see what they can do. The uh, preview up there, Hreds winning in regulation was the vote, not so much. A little bit more faith people need to have in Granite. Interesting moment there. Honestly thought it might have found its way in. D to D, one timer just wide, King of Apes. Had he clipped the inside of the post, that was in. That far side of the net was open. Domi, let's see what he can do. Goes down in the corner for Nicky Dangles and again gets it back. Get too much space for him to work with Nicky Dangles. That pickup threw him into traffic. Hawk in front, Zobi takes it away. At least for now, can Granite get something going? Here's Zobi just trying to bull rush his way into a high danger scoring area. His h -Red's able to settle it down. And honestly, since the last part of the third period in this overtime, Granite is looking pretty good. They're looking on at least an even footing as that was a dangerous poke right there. Could have led to a trip, but they do get the break up and getting right back into the zone. It is Ekin. Shot on. Stopped by Faiz. 9.02 to go. Already halfway through this first overtime of who knows how many. Yeah, you never know. It is, uh, it is when will it end Wednesday. So, uh... You might want to buck your seatbelts out there, folks. And off the draw. It is going to be Atreds here in control. Let's see what they can do going back down the other way. The move there from Villapoyca broken up again by the traffic in front. Now it's Ekin. Going to work his way around. Still has it. Laminen's back for Ekin. That shot again blocked. The legs of a defender. Here's Antonio Manon. For Ekin, across they score! Granite Gaming win it in overtime and stay alive in this series with the overtime victory. Wow, what a play right there. The aggression keeping the puck in the zone and a beautiful bit of passing. Down low to Ekin who kicks it back across and guess who's the hero once again? The center, Zovi, his clutch goal scoring streak continues on right there as Atreds, I mean, they, 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 they had the advantage and Granite just kept pushing, staying alive. I, I I'm honestly kind of shocked. Once, once Atreds grabs that advantage, it's so rare to see them sort of lose it. But Granite stayed hungry, able to force that overtime, and then really looked like, you know, the better team at the end of the third and in that overtime. And that's a big reason of why they're coming away with this victory. That's a big reason why they stave off elimination and will play on our broadcast tomorrow. Incredible job done to fight back. Again, they were up one to nothing, trailed two to one. Antonio Manon tied it and they get the winner here midway through the first overtime to continue on their season both series at a 3-1 to one lead. We will see both series on tomorrow's broadcast, however long they might go. Yeah, look there in another one of the goals. That was the first one in the game there for Ekin. And Sin, just an incredible comeback effort for Granite. I mean, you know, a lot of people, I think, you know, rightfully so, you see that 3 nothing lead. It's like, okay, well, how's this one going to go? But mm -hmm. a great job to stay in this one and stay in the series as a result. Yeah, and tomorrow's going to be a new day, new day. They get to take this win home with them, essentially. Like, you know, yes, they're down 3-1 in the series, but they've won the last game right now. So they got that going for them, and I really like this, this game for them. Again, we've been critical of this team for kind of going back to the same things, even when they're not there. They didn't do so in this one. That last play, absolutely phenomenal. Just a great pass down low to Ekin, who has the wherewithal to kind of feed that over at the right time to Zovian. Of course, shout out to Antonio, the patience there 
to corral the puck, get control of it, wait for the spacing to develop between him and Ekin be tr- before trying to force that pass through because with the passing change this year, those passes in tight can either go past someone or it'll kind of bobble off the stick. There was a very brief window to make that play happen, and he made sure that the pass was there so Ekin could pick it up cleanly and make that second pass over for the game winner. Absolutely. So again, with that, everybody, the action is done for today. One more look at the bracket. You will see the conclusion of our two semifinal series on tomorrow's broadcast. Again, 1945 CET, about 1.45 p.m. Eastern for those of you in North America. 3-1, to one, the advantage for both Atreds and for Lunda. We do appear to be in line for a rematch of what have been the finals in the past two seasons. Will it be three in a row that Atreds and Forlunda meet each other in the finals? It could very well be. And as well, an updated look at our Pro Division bracket, which you could also see in action tomorrow should the other games go short. It is a 2-2 series for Yippie Voskala and Arctic Reality Check currently trailing 2-1 at the current time to the 10th seed in Stargazing. So we might just see some action there as well keep an eye out on the social medias of course sports gamer gg for all the information that you need sin how about that for me strong little birthday present getting some uh some continued yeah. theories here absolutely getting to cover two of these years where we're not, we weren't quite sure what was uh what was gonna happen today but indeed we get to see both of these teams uh going head to head once again i for one can't wait uh i think granite really showed a lot of a lot of stick to in this game, for lack of a better word, to go all cliche, but they did. Uh, they And the mentality, I think, was the right one to kind of have. You can see them having fun no matter what. Even when a goal was being disallowed in, I think it was that first game, they kind of were laughing about it because it's like, yeah, we haven't scored yet, of course. The first one to go into the back and the net's going to get waved off. They lost that game. They came back here. They won this one. They keep at it. They keep having fun. You never know. You start stringing together some wins. It starts with one, and that's... That's what starts a great comeback. So we'll see what they're able to do tomorrow. But this Hred team, you know, they're, they're not going to be too happy about that. They really kind of wanted that perfection here in the playoffs. So they're going to come out strong. Again, yeah, Hred's lose for the first time as well. We will see you all tomorrow. Again, make sure to check out Sin on the YouTube side of things at Symphony Win Productions. I am everywhere, including right here on Twitch at Tookie24. We will be back with you tomorrow. It'll be Tukey 28 at that stage. Uh, We'll be back with you tomorrow for more elite playoff action. We look forward to seeing you. Have a good rest of your night. We'll see you tomorrow.